With the highest level of consumption on the continent, no one takes drugs quite like the British. This is High Society, a series where we meet dealers, users, and manufacturers to find out why the UK has one of the world's most excessive drug habits. When it comes to MDMA, the UK statistically takes more in one session than any other nation on earth. First time you take it, it's like unreal. And there's like loads of drum and bass, loads of lights, and then everything was just like, whoa. Last year, ecstasy-related deaths reached their highest levels in a decade. It's a controlled drug because it's deadly. You don't have to see what's in the media. And now, it's back in the headlines. You need to be aware that there's bad stuff that can kill you by taking it one. We wanted to find out what's making ecstasy so dangerous and how that danger can be reduced. So we've had a vague promise from some teenage drug dealers that they're going to meet us here on the strip in Dawson and tell us what it's like selling ecstasy to people. How's it going? You guys walk up and down the street like, asking people if they want drugs. By and large, what's the most popular drug around here? Mandium pills. Mandium pills. Yeah. Do you think that MDMA is becoming more popular? Yeah, but I think it's always been popular. Yeah. Like, I think it's always been that Bro, drug. It's like, it's like any happy drug. Yeah, like, like, if you're happy, like, you're always gonna, it's always going to be like attracting people, isn't it? Like, like I'm on MDMA way. right now. <laughs> oh, he's on MDMA right now. How, yeah. how are you feeling? Yeah. Uh, he's, got the, he's got the buzz in now. Yeah, I have an idea. Yeah. Yo. So how pure are your pills and how pure is your mandate? We have no idea. We just copied from someone and we make sure it's good enough. We take it ourselves. As in, I'd say the 20% of it is cut. All sorts of stuff. Left to them. The pills come from Holland. That's why they come from Holland. At best, British street dealers will only have a vague idea of what's in their drugs. And that's because ecstasy, whether it's too weak, too strong, or too adulterated, is largely manufactured in Holland. And since the advent of the dark web, Dutch pill makers have been shifting 50 kilos of ecstasy per month. Why smuggle drugs when you can just mail them anonymously with legitimate couriers? To see how the authorities are trying to stop these packages from reaching dealers, we met with UK Border Force. So what's in these parcels here? These two specific parcels are believed to contain MDMA, ecstasy, E. You get all sorts of sort of modern brands that will appeal to young people. We'll have a, a WhatsApp brand, we'll have a Burger King, we have a Shield, we have the, the Lick one, we get like a speech. Like the Rolling bubble. Stones. That's it, we get yeah. yin and yang, yin and yang. So obviously you can't intercept every single package. I guess the question is how many slip through the net? That's hard to say. And That is so hard to say. Yeah. And it's, we wouldn't speculate on that. It's not something we would even give a percentage on. It's the statistics of the statisticians. Mm -hmm. We are all very intelligent here at Border Force. That's what we're paid to do. Mm -hmm. And we do work hard for Border Force and we do stop an awful lot of drugs. This is the room where we do all our testing. Do you have to count all those individual pills? We have done in the past, yes. But we're advised not to. Because of touching them, we try not to touch them as much as possible. Do you, do you find it a little bit exciting? Yeah, it's always exciting. It's always interesting and exciting. A bit like it's not the It's not the blase. Of... It's never something that we're blasé about. Yeah. Because this is a class A controlled drug, and it's a controlled drug for a reason, because it's deadly. Mm -hmm. You don't have to see what's in the media. Then you can see that the red is the library scan for MDMA. You can see the points where it matches at. So yeah, that's definitely MDMA. Again, you can see here, this is actually, the product is in raw form. Okay. Here and also, but there is a small twist of tablets in here, which may be, we have had them in the past been labeled commission on them for the importer. Or commission? May, commission, or it may be that it is actually a sample pack. Mm. This is particularly noxious, this stuff is. If we just get a gram on our fingers and then forget what we're doing and... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Be a very happy <laughs> day. <laughs> do you ever get pill presses sent here? We do. On occasions really? we find pill presses, yes. And I suppose the raw 
chemicals that come in, maybe those are used in, in the pill presses? They can be used yeah. in them. With, with pill presses, they're not actually anything that we could see, so we mm. refer them to other agencies for them to be able to decide whether they can take any action or not. But we all know it would be impossible for Border Force to look inside every package. And judging by the ready availability of ecstasy everywhere in the UK, it's difficult to see how their current approach is any less futile than trying to take a piss on ecstasy. In fact, we found two young entrepreneurs in Brighton who had no trouble using the dark web to sidestep Dutch competition and in the true spirit of Brexit, bring pill production to the UK. We're in the house now where the pill press is, but we only need to allow because the parents are downstairs. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Yeah, all right. You look sick. But I'm turning your phone on silent because it's fucking identical by a fireball ringtone. I know I can't because these fucking gloves, bro. Are you using your tongue on the touch screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've literally never seen anyone use an iPhone with their tongue as a finger. How does it taste? Right under there. So how'd you get this machine? Just uh, credit card information I got from Dark Web to buy it. So you frauded it, basically? Yeah. I'm not going to tell you where for. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. How do you think the Dark Web has changed the drug industry in the UK? Crazy. You can now purchase drugs like you can purchase a fucking microwave. But it's not coming through international gangs and syndicates through Holland? No, we're basically the competition. So what are the things that go into a pill? MDMA, yeah. microcrystalline cellulose. I use like a, whoa, shit. I use a premium mix. All right, well, can you show me how it works? Yeah, man. So that, uh, yeah, it's just, do you know what I mean? So it doesn't come out of a fucking laboratory. <laughs> People think it's clean and shit. And how much are you making in a batch usually? I know I stayed up one night, I did 1600 in that before Glastonbury. You've had 5,000? Well, oh yeah, 5,000 over a week. A week it took. Let's just see. Right, so now we've got 11 grams in here in total. We have 3 grams of onion and then fucking 8 grams of the binding agent, yeah? So just add a little bit of colour to that. Right, so we get this, we stick this in here. We try, generally try not to spill any. We just crank them out like that. It's set well nice, isn't it? You've got red McDonald's, so the, the stamp is a McDonald's. There you go. Oh, yeah. McDonald's. Pretty much it. And you go until you're done. Is it a little bit like, uh, the craft beer revolution, where everyone wants like homemade, small scale. Just like that, yeah. People are getting more of what they want, I suppose. And I can put other things in them. Do you know what I mean? If someone wants me to put ketamine in it or fucking cocaine, I can print Xanax. I can print Valium. I can print absolutely anything I wanted. If something comes from Holland, we can copy that. I'm like, oh, it's things like TMA um, and other like additives that they definitely put in their speed and stuff as well. Whereas I just put MDMA in my and that and then the, then the colorant as well. Why don't you put PMA in? PMA, it's not MDMA, is it? It's not ecstasy, so I'm selling fucking ecstasy. Right. Yeah. And the people you sell to, do they care about knowing whether or not there's PMA in the pills? 100%. 100% they care about that. Tell me exactly what's happened, please. Um, well, one of my mates, he's uh, taken a few drugs tonight, like, and uh, I don't know, we think he's been sitting out of it, like. Put your ear next to his mouth. Can you feel or hear any breathing? Yeah. Uh, These questions are not delaying Not any. breathing, no. Pardon? Uh, it doesn't look like he's breathing, no. Yeah. What drugs did he actually take? Uh, I think it was ecstasy. Ecstasy, okay. Yeah. They left the house about 4.30. They went to a rave. Normal warning, don't be taking anything. Shouted, I'm not stupid, Mum. And then he went. As soon as I seen the police lady, I just said, Gary, Gary, 
please no. She brought me inside, and that's what we've got to tell you. Um, that your son died. Gary Bass died from taking a pill laced with PMA, a substance that's more poisonous and takes longer to kick in than MDMA. Users can think that their pills aren't working, leading them to take a fatal dose. These kids who don't do drugs all the time, just do it when they go to raves or they go to festivals or just go out for a night, that they need to know, they need to be aware that there's bad stuff that can kill you by taking it once. Apparently there is some kind of um, place in Holland where you can have your, t your pills tested. They have like lists of all the ingredients that's in the tablet. And I wish that would have been around when Gary went out that night. Drug testing isn't only important because of adulterants like PMA. It also allows users to know how much MDMA they're taking. And that's especially important this year when pills are the strongest they've been in a decade. A normal pill contains about 80 milligrams of MDMA, but recently they've been weighing in at 240 milligrams. To understand why these pills are popping up, we spoke to Adam Winstock, founder of the world's largest global drug survey. A lot of the things we've been hearing about MDMA recently have been super strength pills. Why has this happened? Why are we so obsessed with pills being more dangerous and more strong now? I think it's to do with new manufacturers trying to make a place in the marketplace. It's effectively a pissing contest. People going, we've got the best pills, and they equate tragically that better pills are stronger pills. I mean, if there was a plea I could make to MDMA manufacturers, it would be, guys, standardize your pills, always have 100 milligrams in, and score them four ways. I mean, it would be fantastic. People could test those, take a quarter of a pill, see how they feel, and there would be consistency. Okay, so we're here at Fabric, where two teenagers have died probably of ecstasy overdoses. Does closing down nightclubs offer any kind of solution to deaths from drugs? No, because people who choose not to go to Fabric will clearly go and take drugs elsewhere. And, and Fabric clearly invested a lot of time and effort to try and make their clubs as safe as possible. And I think they did a lot of really good things. But I don't think enough clubs are upfront and honest enough that drug taking takes place. They will work with the police to ensure it doesn't. But I think the police should encourage them to be really active on their websites and on social media to say, if you're going to take drugs, not at our club, maybe at home, we want you to be safe. Tell them this is what you can do to reduce your risk. And most importantly, this is how you can look after your mates. Do you have any data on how many people actually use pill testing? Um, so we've actually just done this as part of the, the Global Drug Survey mini survey this year. So we had about 10, 12,000 people from around the world. In the UK, it was about 2.5% of people said they'd used reagent testing kits in the last year. But over half, said they'd be interested in getting pill testing done if it was available. When asked about the possibility of pill testing in clubs, Theresa May is quoted as saying, if somebody has purchased something that the state has deemed illegal, it is not then for the state to go and test it for you. Despite that strong stance, this summer, the drug testing movement had its first success on UK soil. Over here is The Loop, which is an organization that for the first time ever has got an on-site area at a festival where you can get your drugs tested. And you can actually hear people, having received the results, yelling things like, yay, my pills are strong. Or presumably, there's rat poison in my cocaine. What are you crushing up there? So I've just been handed a bit of a pill, a bit of a blue pill. Okay. And I'm going to run it on this machine. It has an infrared laser so that you can then identify illegal drugs and legal drugs and lots of other typical things that you'd find in pills. Right. Um, like baking soda or something? Like, like baking soda and like chalk and like, you know, things like paracetamol and all sorts of things. That, What's the worst thing that uh, stuff gets cut with? Actually, we just had another, another pill come in just now which we might send a warning out about that contained a quite unpleasant drug called pentalone and that caused someone to have a psychotic episode last night. So Here, really? Here, yeah. So this is just a regular ecstasy pill? This is, yeah. So it was a blue Tesla. Tesla pills were around last year and what that often means is that they're then not very good the subsequent year because you get lots of copycats that try and use the fact that it was a really good pill the year before. And in fact, that's what we've just found. So it looks like it contains MDMA, but there's not much MDMA in this pill at all. 
So not dangerous, but just not a good pill. It's not, it's not dangerous, so yeah, it basically just means it's all filler. One girl had found a baggie of mysterious white powder on the ground. And rather than employing the time-honored method of taking a bump and crossing your fingers, she left it to the professionals. Are you coming back to collect your results? Yep. If you just bear with me, I'll just go and check that the results in for you. One second. Where did you find these drugs? I was out last night and I found them on the floor. You it was a full baggie, so I was curious about where it came from. What are you hoping it is? I mean, if you've got three cocaine, that'd be great. <laughs> Okay, so I've got your results, and as you said, you believed and thought that it was cocaine that you brought into us. It actually came back that it was ketamine. Really? Yes, it did. <laughs> we offer a free disposal service as well, yeah. so if you wanted us to safely dispose of that for you today, we could do that as well. Is that something that you would like us to do? Um, I don't take care of myself, but I know some of my friends do, so... Do many people opt for the disposal option? We have had a few, yes, so if it's something that is of concern, yeah. then they've handed it back to us. What other drugs are you taking? Pills. Have you got those tested? No. Isn't that the one that you'd be the most worried about, though? I got it off my friend whose friend got them and supplied them. And there's a website called Pill Report. Yeah. That's really, really helpful because you just type in what you've got and it pretty much gives you a running commentary of people that are taking it. Right. Do you think that anyone in the government might say this is encouraging drug use rather than detracting from it? I think it's an easy criticism to say that we're encouraging drug use. What we hope is we're reducing drug-related harm. More than 50 people a year die from ecstasy in the UK, and that figure's rising. So I think there's a desire from everybody on site to be trying to reduce drug-related deaths. What I've got is a brilliant group of volunteers who do have that expertise, and so they're helping us put that dream into practice. Does it ever worry you, like, not knowing what's in the drugs? Um, not really. It does worry me a bit. Does it? I mean, a little bit. Everybody knows that millions of people take ecstasy every weekend. They should know what is inside the tablet. It's the nature of humans who we're going to get wanted. Ecstasy doesn't have to be a drug that makes it into the tabloids every week. When Border Force intercepts a haul of super-strength orange Tesla pills, they proudly dispose of them. But for the shipments that slip through the net, the Loop's approach is to send out a warning that could potentially save lives. We can't make manufacturers slow down their super-strength arms race, and we can't force them not to cut their pills. It's also pretty clear that we can't stop British people from taking ecstasy. But we can make it safer. And to be honest, if most people saw what they looked like after caning a half gram, they'd probably decide to cut down anyway.